long as we are together. We're not going down. If you've ever pulled a devil trigger or set your clock to which time, Solstice wants to take up arms to battle for your heart. And though its developer Reply Game Studios follows the recipe as best it can, Solstice is a great reminder that not all character action hack and slashers are created equal. Combat is the shining point, but it's plagued with a terrible camera, some buggy performance, and a steep learning curve. Monsters are inspired and test your reflexes and wit, but the world they occupy is bland and lifeless even more so than a blasted out city in the aftermath of a small apocalypse should be. This story of betrayal and intrigue within a holy order of knights is full of pretty predictable twists and turns, cackling bad guys, and shady anti-heroes that are all pretty mediocre. It's the touching relationship between Briar and Loot, sisters whose bodies and souls have been magically joined together, that is the strongest bit of storytelling throughout this 20-hour journey. This bizarre process creates super soldiers called Chimera tailor-made to fight the monstrosities from another dimension pouring into this reality. Briar and Loot aren't the only Chimera in this world, and the comparison between them and the other clandestine duos make them stand out, as they seem to be the only body and soul duo that actually like each other. But by the time you're sent on your mission to investigate a supernatural storm turning all life it spreads across into heinous beasts, you're the only one around to get the job done. The city of Ilden, under attack by otherworldly forces, is a bland place populated with eccentric monsters. Your journey into the ominous storm in the center of the fortified city takes you from the sprawling slums into the castle walls, through the dank sewers, and eventually to the reality-bent heart of the city itself. Yet many of these locations are dull and unappealing and barely look any different than one another. You'd have a hard time telling the difference between them as they all feature the same dingy stone walls, dilapidated gates, and fiery ramparts. Contrast that with the exceptional monsters populating the place, which are hit after hit of truly twisted and creative creature design worthy of being mentioned alongside the genre's finest, and the environmental design seems especially lackluster. These freaks take all manner of shape and size, with the most eccentric having glowing prisms where their head should be, or literally being a giant head that opens up to reveal a pulsating colossus within like the world's most grotesque Matryoshka doll. Even Briar and Loot, who are constantly attempting to avoid succumbing to corruption and transforming into monsters themselves, look super cool when they occasionally lose that battle. Actually navigating through these stages is a chore as well. Most involve some form of breaking color-coded crystals to progress, which is just another face on the old-school keycard hunt. It evolves to sending you back through stages to break smaller nodes in order for their connected walls to shatter, and eventually puts time limits on how many you need to break in succession. Every single repetitive second of these sections is a drag between fights, and there were a lot of them. And while these linear stages hide collectibles, upgrade points and small detours, and unchallenging platforming segments off the beaten path, it's tough to get motivated to explore these largely underwhelming locations, especially if breaking even more crystals could potentially be involved. Sprinkled throughout Solstice's stages are the far more compelling combat encounters. If you've played any character action game since the original Devil May Cry, you'll immediately see where this one draws its inspiration from. Your big sword is the bread and butter of Briar's attacks, though as you progress you'll gain access to a wide array of weapons like a bow, a bladed whip, or tonfas that double as guns. Each weapon has a particular strength, your fist is great for busting armor, and your speedy katar blades overwhelm enemies that need extra time to summon minions. There is some overlap, but for the most part each of the seven weapons felt like it had a specific set of enemies it was tailor-made for, and all are useful. Putting upgrade points into new combos and weapon potency lets you favor one over the others, and if you do, you can really drill down and make it powerful. While Briar does the beating, her ghostly sister Loot acts largely passively to protect her and create openings for attacks. She is a one-stop shop for defensive options, deflecting projectiles, repelling close strikes, and slowing and binding attempted assailants all happens with a press of a button. The various defenses have limits which can be upgraded, but when things get very busy on screen, and they often do, it's nearly impossible to know how many enemies are frozen on the field or how many times you've deflected an attack recently. This means sometimes, inexplicably, an attack will sneak through your defenses unmarked, and if you didn't avoid it the old-fashioned way, you can say goodbye to your combo meter. Loot is also responsible for managing auras, which affect what you can interact with. While exploring, that means tediously switching back and forth between colors for platforming or crystal-cracking purposes. In combat, you can do damage to blue or red monsters, respectively. 
Enemy groups that mix in both colors as well as armored, flying, or swarmed creatures are some of the most challenging tests of your reflexes and awareness you'll have in a game like this. On night difficulty, the third of five and the highest you can go on the initial playthrough, prepare to see the game over screen dozens of times as you fail to juggle all of the balls required to keep a battle in your favor, let alone do so stylishly. It's a fun and rewarding challenge most of the time, though some fights felt straight up unfair as one missed cue could start an avalanche of damage that's hard to recover from. Briar and Loot get access to some flashy moves and a huge power spike if you can excel in combat, but the pressure to be perfect in order to get there feels counterintuitive. As your combo counter rises, so does your unity meter. When you hit the threshold, some attack strings end with big finishers that do tons of damage, and you can access a form that superpowers all of Briar's attacks for a limited time. These are great rewards, but the fact that they're stuck behind a system that requires you to already be doing well enough that you don't really need help means you'll never get an opportunity to use these boons to swing a battle in your favor. This kind of regressive system doesn't exist in other popular games like the old God of Wars or DMC, which allow you to build up a super meter over time and across many battles that can be triggered at will when ready. Having them be dependent on building a combo in one specific fight makes them too unreliable to work into a game plan. The biggest challenge in any given fight, though, is the camera. It defaults to an off-center position, trying to keep as much of the action in frame as possible, but struggles when you edge up against walls or attempt to move it around manually. Locking onto an enemy might change the perspective completely, and the camera will sometimes end up floating behind something in the foreground and blocking the action, or zooming way in if you get cornered, leaving only bits of the enemy in frame to pummel you off-screen. It's not the only issue, for example. Occasionally, moves that automatically hone in on enemies just miss inexplicably, but it's the one I dealt with in some form in almost every fight. If you just can't get enough of the style of action slasher that Hideki Kamiya made popular in the United States over 20 years ago, Solstice might help scratch that itch, at least while you're in combat. The setting and story, even with its strong pair of main characters, are largely just a bland backdrop for its generally competent and challenging hack and slash battles against some deviously fun and interesting enemies. So long as you have the stomach and willpower to trudge back and forth through its tedious linear levels and wrangle its unruly camera in the midst of colorful screen-filling chaos, those fights are the light at the end of the tunnel. For more, check out our reviews of Metal Hellsinger or Steel Rising, and for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.